I don't have to put him in the medical college directly. I have to first make the grounds very clear. First he goes into the pre-primary school, then goes into the school, first standard onward on passes school, then goes to the higher school, then college, and when he's fit, then he enters the medical college. Similarly, Almighty God, who has knowledge of the unseen, and knowledge of everything, he even has knowledge of the human beings. So, it is mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Rad, chapter number 13, verse number 38, Allah says, لِكُلِّ أَجْلِنْ kitab that we have sent a revelation in every age, in every period. By name, four are mentioned in the Quran. Torah, Zabur, Injil, and the Quran. But there were several revelations sent. The first revelation, Almighty God knew that the human being had to develop. If he would have revealed the Quran at the first time, at the time of Adam, peace be upon him, he knew the human beings won't be able to grasp it. That is the reason in the revelation that came before the Quran. That is the Injil. Today we have the Bible. Though we don't consider the Bible to be the Injil, but some parts of the Bible may be the Word of God. It's mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 20 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall show you the way to come. He shall glorify me. So here, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he knew, but yet he said that you will not be able to grasp it. Therefore, when the last and final messenger will come, he will show you things to come. So similarly, Almighty God, he knew very well that when is the right time for the human beings to receive the last and final revelation, the Quran, and that was about 1400 years ago. As far as the second part of the question is concerned, what about the people that came before the Quran was revealed? I will tell them that if my son goes to standard one, he will not be given the medical question paper. He will be given the question paper of standard one. If he goes to higher school, he'll be given the question of higher school. Then junior college, fine? So similarly, the basic message of Almighty God in all the scriptures, in all the revelations, from the first revelation till the last revelation, Quran was the same, that you have to believe in one God, that you have to worship him and no one else. So all the messengers, right from the first messenger, Adam, peace be upon him, Right down to Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. All of them taught the basic message of oneness of God and about Tawheed. And about this message of oneness of God and Tawheed, inshallah, I'll be discussing in detail on the last day of this conference, on the last Sunday, that's the 20th of January, inshallah. Hope that answers the question. Sister Side, if you have a question from a non Muslim sister, could you please state it? Assalamu alaikum. This is on behalf of a non-Muslim, Sister Vandana. She says, I'm new to this concept, uh, have limited knowledge, therefore asking a basic question. If out of 6,000 verses, 1,000 are about scientific facts, then what really is the essence of the Quran? The sister asked a very good question, that if the Quran contains more than 6,000 verses, and more than a thousand speak about science, what is the essence of the Quran? Sister, as I mentioned in my early answer, the basic essence of the Quran is Tawheed. Believing in one God and worshipping Him alone and no one else. And the Quran, as I mentioned, is not a book of science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E. -E. It's a book of science, S-I-G-N-S. -S. It's a book of ayats. The Quran is a book which shows you how a life should be led. And when I had a debate with Shishi Ravi Shankar, I said this is the best book on art of living. If there is any book on art of living which is the best, it is the Quran. Best book on art of living and a membership of more than 1.3 billion people. So this book shows you how to lead a life. Now many a time you understand that because the Quran is the word of Almighty God, one verse of the Quran has got multiple angles. Now the same thousand verses which are speaking about science, it doesn't mean it only speaks about science, it speaks about various other aspects also. That's the beauty of the Quran. When a layman sees it, he understands it. When a scientific man sees it, he sees it in a different angle. It satisfies both. So that's the beauty of the Quran. That does not mean the Quran is the book of science. Yes, but there is not a single verse of the Quran which goes against established science. 
because it's a book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty God so this book is a book of guidance how a life should be led it shows a person to believe in oneness of God how to worship him and how to lead the life the pros and cons the faraiz what a human being should do and the prohibited things that he should abstain from it's mentioned in the Quran hope that answers the question sister sister if you have another question go ahead if it's from a non-muslim your presentation is an impressive but could you just ask this group to raise their hands who knew some of the information that you mentioned now the thought here is why is general education and the learning of the holy quran not integrated sister has a question but from the audience how many of you knew the major portion of what i've said in the lecture please raise your hand major portion of what i've mentioned mashallah you can say most of them at least more than 50 percent if not all and the reason is that i've written a book also quran and modern science compatible and compatible which has been distributed in the conference if those who have not got a copy inshallah on your way out the copy of my talk quran and modern science will be distributed inshallah it's a four color book regarding the part of the question the second part that why isn't education being given to the Muslims so I expected the sister would have thought that maybe 1% or 10% less than 10% raised the hand so here you see mashallah majority knew it and yet they came for the talk alhamdulillah maybe they came for the question answer session that is the best part of the program sister as far as Islam is concerned the first guidance given by Almighty God in the glorious Quran, in the last and final revelation to the human beings, it was not to offer salah. It was not to perform hajj or pilgrimage. It was ikra, read, recite, proclaim. So the first guidance given by Almighty God in the last and final revelation, it was to read, it was education. And that's the reason the major stress that the Muslims should put is on education. And Alhamdulillah, the people of the South, I know from Kerala and even of Madras, Mashallah of Chennai. As far as the percentage is concerned in the other parts of India, Alhamdulillah, the Muslims in Kerala are 100% educated. Not Muslims, all Keralites, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, they're educated. So even culture counts into it. As far as the religion of Islam is concerned, every Muslim, he should be educated. So that's the message for those who are not educated, that acquiring education is important. And that is the first guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last and final revelation, the glorious Quran. Hope that answers the question. Do we have another question from a guest here, non-Muslim? Okay, we'll go to the gentleman section, rear microphone. Gentlemen, could you please state your name and your occupation, please? Good evening, everyone. My name is Sanjeev. Um, I'm working here in Landmark Company as an admin executive. Uh, I got a few questions, but I'll ask only two questions uh, regarding this uh, Islam. First question is, uh, uh, do Islam believe in rebirth? Uh, and second question is, in Islam, it's not allowed to commit suicide. But many people that in Pakistan, in Arabic countries, they are uh, blowing themselves up and they are killing many people. So who they who are the people they are motivating them whether they are for really following the islam or who is motivating them that is my question sir the brother has two questions the first question does islam believe in rebirth and the second question that is suicide prohibited in islam how come people in pakistan other part of the world they are blowing up themselves and killing themselves the two questions as far as the first question is concerned that does islam believe in rebirth if you ask only in rebirth, yes, Islam believes in rebirth. What we believe, that a human being has come to this world once, the Quran says that we give you life and you come on this earth. Then we cause you to die and then we resurrect you again in the next life. This is exactly what is mentioned in the Vedas. If you read Rig Ved, book number 10, it speaks about Punar Janam. Punar means next, Janam means life. So the Ved speaks about Punar Janam about the next life.